بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو ویڈیو نمبر ٹو ہنڈریڈ انڈوجنائٹی اینڈ سیمولٹینائٹی ان اکانومیٹرکس لیٹ می اسٹارٹ وتھ دی ڈیفینیشن آف انڈوجنائٹی لیٹ اس سپوز وی ہیو اریگریشن ماڈل ان وچ وائی از ایکول ٹو الفا پلس بیٹا ون ایکس ون پلس بیٹا ٹو ایکس ٹو پلس ایف سائنان The variable x1 will be endogenous if it is correlated with the epsilon, that is the error term. Uh, there are a number of sources or causes of endogeneity. The first source causing endogeneity is omitted variables case. Suppose the true econometric model underlying the data is y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus v but uh, instead of this true model we estimate the following model that is y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus epsilon in this case the variable x1 will be endogenous if it is correlated with x3 why because In this case, epsilon will be a function of v, that is error term in the first model, and uh, x3. So, the if we omit relevant variable in the model, uh, that may cause endogeneity. The second cause or source of endogeneity is uh, measurement error. Let us assume again that the true model underlying the data is y equals alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus epsilon but instead of this model we estimate the following model that is y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 star plus epsilon in this case uh, x2 star is equal to x2 plus some constant phi now variable x2 is endogenous if phi depends on x2 let us take an example of uh, a hospital size suppose that the variable x2 stands for hospital size that is the number of beds in the hospital and that the measurement error is greater for large hospital then as x2 grows so does the constant phi thus epsilon is correlated with x2 causing endogeneity If we rearrange the equation, we have the following equations. Y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 star plus epsilon. Y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 and instead of x2 star, we write x2 plus phi plus epsilon. And uh, y is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus epsilon plus beta 2 phi. If phi is a function of x2, then the error term epsilon is uh, correlated with x2 and uh, that also leads to endogeneity. The third source of endogeneity is uh, simultaneity and uh, simultaneity is uh, related to simultaneous equations model. It says a system of uh, simultaneous equations occurs when two or more left hand side variables are function uh, functions of each other for example y1 is a function of x1 and uh, y2 and in that case y1 is equal to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus gamma 2 x y2 plus uh, alpha similarly y2 is a uh, equal to alpha plus uh, gamma 1 x1 plus gamma 2 y2 plus epsilon if you if you look at these two equations y1 is function of y2 whereas y2 is function of y1 so this is a type of uh, simultaneous equation system and uh, there is simultaneity y1 depends on y2 and y2 depends on y1 and that also would lead to endogeneity so with some simple algebraic manipulation we can rewrite these two equations in reduced form as a single equation 
with an endogenous regressor. Pre-testing for endogeneity. Can we uh, pre-test whether uh, the variable is endogenous or not? One of the most famous tests is Hausman 1978 and some others are described in Nakamura and Nakamura 1998. The idea is that the method of instrumental variables uses two stages least squares, two SLS. If there is no endogeneity, it is more efficient to use OLS. But if there is endogeneity, OLS will be inconsistent. So, two SLS is the best alternative to be used. There are some problems involved. All the tests have low power, particularly when two SLS would cause a significant loss of efficiency. Practically, many people use a Hausman test, fail to reject the null hypothesis of no endogeneity and then use OSLS. A more statistically reliable approach will be to, be to base judgments of endogeneity on how the system under study works. There are some responses to endogeneity. What if we are unsure whether a variable is endogenous? The first approach is to ignore it. I will discuss that later on. The second approach is to use instrumental variables for every possible endogenous variable. And the third approach is subtract out the variable using time series panel data. So far as the first approach of ignoring it is concerned, it is not advisable because true endogeneity causes OLS to be inconsistent. And if the results are inconsistent, then we may not rely on such results. So far as the approach number two is concerned, to use instrumental variable on every possible endogenous variable, uh, some people also claim that uh, it is not advisable because it will cause a loss of efficiency and hence wider confidence interval and may lead to a bias. But uh, many people use uh, instrumental variable when there is endogeneity in the variable and for that purpose instead of OLS they use uh, two SLS that is two stages least square. Uh, the third approach is that of differencing. Suppose that the endogeneity is fixed over time such as measurement error or an omitted variable and further suppose that observed data in two time periods. In that case, a difference in difference model can be used and that is known as DD model in which we subtract values at time 1 before from values at time 2 that is after and the endogenous variable will drop out. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a brief lecture about endogeneity, sources of endogeneity and uh, some uh, responses to endogeneity. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to the YouTube channel Research Made Easy with Himi Khan, kindly subscribe to the channel and uh, do not forget to click on the bell icon so that you can get notification about my other videos that uh, I will upload for you soon. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in another video. Have a good afternoon.